Hi guys, it's Robin with Boutte Chardin Florist in Vancouver, Canada. I have a video tutorial for you today on how to make a flower crown. So we're going to jump right into it and go into the supplies. To start, I have two different kinds of wires. So um, if you, you know from other videos that I tend to use 26 gauge the most when I make boutonnieres. For a floral crown, I prefer to start with a 22, so a slightly thicker wire to form the base, the round part that goes around your head. Because it is a thicker wire, it's a bit stronger and firmer. However, if you can't get your hands on 26, you can, or 22, sorry, you can definitely use a thinner wire like 26 or 28 and just make it thicker by doubling or tripling it up. Um, I would tape them together. You can use any kind of tape, like a scotch tape, just to make sure that they're really well together so it looks like one wire and that has that alone makes it a lot stronger. So you have options. You can use 22 gauge or you can use several pieces of a 26 or 28. I do, however, have the 26 as well because in my crown today, I'm going to be adding spray roses. And I'm, to wire spray roses, I prefer to use a 26. So just something to keep in mind. Depending on what you're putting into your crown, you may need you may need different gauges of wire, but usually you can make it work with something like a 26. I have wire cutters because I don't like to cut my wire with regular scissors, but you can do it if you want. But I have my wire cutters. You can use regular scissors to cut your flowers today because the stems are going to be really weak and thin, so they're easy to cut. But I always have my snips, so I've got those today. And the last thing you're going to need is stem wrap, floral stem wrap. So not the strapping tape. This is the tape that's papery and you stretch it to make it stick to itself. So that's the tape you need. It's the same tape you use for boutonnieres. Making a floral crown is very similar to making a boutonniere. There's a lot of, a little bit of wiring and there's a lot of taping involved. So that covers the supplies and now we're gonna get into the flowers, greens and fillers we're gonna use. The first flower or green that I'm gonna show you is Eucalyptus parvifolia. So this is a really good green for a flower choice or a boutonniere because it has very delicate little leaves. It's very, very pretty. It looks fantastic in a crown. So the way to work with it is um, you wanna cut it, to make a crown, you wanna cut it into smaller pieces. And I think a piece about that size is really good. So you go through it and you just sort of cut off enough side branches um, to get started and it, some of the branches, the lower you get on the stem, the longer they get. So you don't want them to go to waste because that is too long for a crown. So what you do is, parvifolia is really nice because every, all the leaves, they grow out in pairs, opposite pairs. So you just trim right above where a pair of leaves come out. So now you've got sort of, you split this into two and you could probably split this again. So you're not wasting those longer branches at the bottom. You just want pieces that are roughly this or even a little bit smaller to work with. One of the main flowers we're gonna use in the crown as accents are going to be spray roses. Spray roses are a great choice for flower crowns. Um, they're, and for the same reason that they're a good choice for boutonnieres as well, they tend to be hardier and they tend to stand up well outside of water. So uh, what you do is um, you pick out the heads that you need and this is the flower that you are gonna need that 26 gauge wire for. Um, and I like a combination of bigger, more open flowers and some buds as well. I like a little bit of both, I like to mix it up. And you'll see what I what I mean by that when we put the the, um, the crown together. So let's get some more open flowers. That's pretty good for now. I might wire some more later. So these are the only flowers that we're going to wire in this um, in this crown. So this is when you pull out your 26 gauge. You cut a piece that's about maybe four to five inches long. I'm going to go over this fairly quickly, but we've gone over the method of wiring spray roses in another video. So if you want to go through our archives and take a look at that, if you need a bit more instruction on how this is done. Um, that's a good video to watch, but I'm going to, I'm going to go over the basics though, just the same. So we trim it to about a quarter of an inch to half an inch um, underneath the, the head of the flower. And the fat bit of the calyx is what we're going to pierce with our piece of 26 gauge wire. So it goes completely across through the fattest part underneath the flower head so that you've suspended it. Whoops. So you have the, um, the wire completely horizontal through underneath the flower. You bring the two ends together. You get your floral tape out, your stem wrap, stem wrap, not strapping tape, stem wrap, the kind that's uh, not sticky, it only sticks to itself. You stretch it. And you start turning it around. And your goal is to ultimately cover that wire with, with the tape. And the reason that you're gonna wanna wire the flowers is it's just gonna be easier to insert them into the, um, onto the crown if they have sort of a thin artificial wire that you can work with. It's just a lot easier than trying to tape their natural stems on. So that's what you would want to do with your spray roses and you would do all of those and have them ready to go so that when you're ready to put your crown together, they are ready to be inserted. The next component we're going to use are hypericum berries and I found some beautiful peach ones that I think are going to really work well with that blush sort of 
peachy toned um, spray rolls that we have. So for the Hypericum, I'm not going to wire it. You can if you want, but I feel like the stems are small enough. I'm only gonna use a little bit as accents. So you do the same sort of thing. You just cut them into smaller pieces um, so that when you're ready to insert them, you're just gonna tape them right onto the crown, which we're gonna get to in a bit. But that's pretty much the prep if you're using Hypericum berries. And the very last component of our crown is going to be wax flowers. So a lot like the parvifolia, you're just gonna cut it into smaller branches. Something like that is a good size. You just sort of pick through it and you find little pieces, um, varying amounts. Some that have a lot of flowers is fine, some that have less. And yep, that's how you prep it. You make a little pile of smaller cut pieces uh, and then you're ready to get started. So we've gone over all of the components and we're ready to start putting it together. Um, the first thing you want to do, like I mentioned before, is you want a little pile of all of your little pieces ready to go. It is so much easier to just add them as you go rather than pausing to cut another piece off. Um, I only have the greens and the wax here to start because most of my crown is going to be wax and greens. I'm going to do about 75% wax and greens and there's going to be a cluster of roses and berries off to the side, um, kind of off center. You can do it any way you like. You can do spray roses and greens mixed all the way around. You can do just wax. You can do just greens. The really nice thing about floral crowns is there's a lot of flexibility in what looks good. So the fun part of it is designing it yourself. But like I said, um, the way I'm going to do it today is like mostly greens and wax. So that's all I have for now. To get started, what I like to do is I take two pieces of wire actually. I find one is not long enough to form a loop that's going to fit on the average person's head. So what I do is I take my two pieces, in this case 22, and I just hook them together. And you do this any way that makes sense to you. I just sort of like twist them around each other. And I find that generally does the job. By the time you finish taping um, pieces onto this, this will be very secure, the joint. So don't worry too much about taping this at this point, um, unless you feel like it makes it easier for you, but I usually leave it like this. And the next bit I do, and this is gonna be tricky, because I'm gonna do this off camera, so my apologies for that in advance, but what I, I'm gonna try my best to describe it. So what I would do is I take this and I wrap it around my head to figure out where do I want the crown to start. So I'm gonna do one that starts roughly above my ear. I'm not gonna do a complete crown. Like I said, you can do a complete crown if you want, but I like the look of a partial half crown. So I'm gonna hold this up to my head. I'm gonna figure out where does it start behind my ear and I'm gonna make a note of it. So give me a second. <laughs> my apologies again. So, I'm gonna start it here. That's roughly right behind my ear. So that's where I'm gonna start. You don't have to close it at this point. I like to leave it open until I'm done and then I like to twist the two ends together and then it stays kind of flexible and you can adjust it. So that's where I'm gonna start. So to get started, you have these little pieces of greens and I think this is a pretty good length because by the time you mold it to your head, if the, like I said before, if the pieces were too long, by the time you start twisting it, sometimes the pieces can stick off of the crown too much. So I like to, personally, I like to do smaller pieces. I find that they tend to look a little nicer. So what you do, and this is time consuming, but easy. You just tape the little stems onto the wire. And this is tricky because you need to twist it. I'm trying to do this without twisting the wire too much. Um, but yeah, basically you're trying to tape each individual piece on and you overlap them. So we've got that. We want to hide the, the greens as much as possible, the green tape. So we actually I'll do one at a time. I often just end up spinning the wire just to get it to, to twist around. So you stretch, always stretching this tape. You, anytime you use floral stem wrap, you're stretching it or else it's not sticky enough. Sorry, this part might go off camera a bit. Okay, so we started to get the, the greens coming along. So I'm gonna put a little bit of wax in there. I want just a tiny accent right now. And that's probably long enough. One thing you might have noticed is everything is unidirectional. Everything is pointing the same way. I'm not adding any greens that point in the opposite direction. Everything goes the same way. So it looks really neat and tidy by the time you're done. That's a good place for the wax. Really stretch this tape or else it's gonna to be too loose and the bits are gonna slide around. This is the hardest part 
with a crown. Because at least with a boutonniere wire that's short, it's easy to spin, but I find it really hard to spin a big piece like this. Okay, so we're starting to get that on there, and that's basically what it is. So we're gonna, I'm gonna continue doing that. I'm gonna get to about three quarters of the way, or maybe halfway, when I'm gonna start putting my, my flowers in. So I'm gonna go off camera, um, do a bit of work on this, and we're gonna get back together when we're ready to put in the berries and the roses. All right then, so I've caught up to the point that I wanna start inserting my flowers. It's a little bit past the halfway point. Um, I think it looks fantastic. I'm really fond of this style, so um, I think it looks good. And uh, you could absolutely just complete the entire crown like this. It's very on trend, very natural, really beautiful looking. And the wax and the parvifolia go so well together. Uh, just a couple of things to note. When I put it together, I always like to hold it up every few inches that I, that I uh, make the crown up to my head and look in a mirror, just to make sure I like the shape of the crown and the way that it's kind of molding to my head. So just a little, a good way to sort of um, check your quality while you're working. And another thing I like to do, especially when I do a half crown, is I taper it at the beginning. So I start it off a little bit thinner and it gets a little, it gets fatter as it goes. I like that look. I think it looks more natural. So we're just past the halfway point. And like I said, when I put it on my head, and I will show you this at the end of the video, how it looks put on, a little bit past the halfway point off center, I'm going to do a cluster of flowers. So this is where the different sizes of the rose, spray roses really comes in handy. I love a look a lot like a boutonniere where it starts off with buds and then you progress to gradually bigger and bigger flowers. You don't have to do this, but I think it looks really nice. So that's what I'm gonna do. So you're gonna do the exact same thing you already did. You're gonna tape pieces on, but now you're gonna start introducing berries and roses into it. So uh, pretty much a repetition of what we just did. Let's start with some berries here. We just put it on like this. And the taping, it's a, just a tricky angle to work at. I found that when I went off camera to do this, I found it a lot easier to um, hold it in front of me sort of vertically while I, move, while I worked, but I don't wanna take this off camera too much. So I'm gonna do my best to, to instead of spinning the, the crown around, I'm gonna move the tape around, which is way harder to work. So when you do this, definitely do whatever feels the most natural to you. But it's, it's not too bad, it is at least sticking. So we've got our berries on there. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start with a little bit of berries and then I think it would look really good. Maybe with, let's see how it looks with a bit of wax. There's a little bit of playing around. You can you definitely just sort of like hold pieces up, see if you like the look. I like a little bit of wax to kind of cloud those berries, I think. So let's do that. A little bit of that there. And the next thing I'm gonna put on is a, is a bud, which I have ready to go. Like I said at the beginning, you want all of your pieces ready, so I've wired and taped all of my rose heads. Okay, so we've got a little cluster of wax. I've got my tightest bud, the tightest rose. It's going to be inserted about here. And this is where having the, um, the wired stem is really handy. That's a, a bit longer than we need it to be. It's so much easier to tape that on than it would be to tape the natural stem of the rose. And it's, you're not gonna know this until you do it, but, but this entire crown that I've made so far is very firm, like it's quite sturdy. So by the time you've wired, sorry, by the time you've taped all of those stems, little bits of pieces onto this um, piece of wire, it gets really thick. So it's not a flimsy wire anymore. It's starting to feel more like a headband, which is a really good thing. It's gonna be really secure on your head. So we've got that first bud. And I think what I'll do is I'll do a bit more berries because I love the berries with the spray rose. I think that looks quite good. Let's see if I can tape those two, kind of get two birds with one stone. I'll probably do a little bit of greens now on top of that. And I probably will just show you rather than tape it because it it's quite time consuming to tape. I'll show you what that looks like and then I'll complete it. I'll finish it off off camera like I did before. And the very last shot, I'm gonna show you how it looks on my head so you can see. So I like that. So the just like, oops, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So just like, the bear, just like the roses start off small, I like to do a little bit of berry and then the berries get denser and denser in the cluster. So what I would do next is I probably would like to do a little bit of green just so we keep that green consistent in the crown. And then I would move on to a bigger spray rose. So I would start getting the cluster fatter in the middle. And then when I finish my cluster, I'll probably do a little bit of greens at the very end just to finish it off. So I'm gonna do that off camera. And the very next shot we're gonna have is the completed crown and we'll finish with it on my head so you can see what it looks like. 
So I finished the crown, and just a reminder, it is a partial crown. I didn't do the whole thing, although you can definitely do a full, complete crown all the way around. I left the ends open because when I put it on my head, and I'm about to do this in a couple minutes to show you, I'm going to pull it pretty snug, and then I'm gonna twist the two ends like this just to keep it secure, and I'll add a bobby pin or two just to really keep it on my head. Um, you can always trim these shorter as well because they are quite long. You don't need it to be this long, just long enough to twist. Um, I'm quite happy with this. So I think you can see the cluster of roses I added. We've got that little bud, a medium size, and the largest rose. You could have done roses all the way around the crown. Um, that's a fantastic look as well. Um, yeah, I think I'm ready to put it on and show you how it looks, and we'll uh, wrap up the video. So that brings us to the very best part about making a flower crown, which is actually trying it on and modeling it. So I do recommend doing that periodically while you're putting it together as well, just to be sure that you like the way it's coming together. So I'm going to really quickly turn my head to the side so you can see, like I said, it's a partial crown, but you could have done it all the way around um, and it would look really good. You could do, I've got my cluster of roses right above my left ear, but you could have done it. And a lot of people do um, like a full crown of spray roses and filler. That's also a really good look. Um, my last comment is my main comment about just DIY flowers in general, which is a point on availability. So one of the hardest bits about choosing to do your own flowers is trying to find the same flowers, fillers, greens that are in the pictures that you love, that you're trying to replicate. So just know that that's a challenge for a lot of florists as well. So you may not have the same flowers, greens, fillers that you found um, that I use today or that are in the photos that you're liking um, on Pinterest and Google and whatever. But just know that um, that's normal. And as long as you can find reasonable substitutes. So um, like today, I use Parvifolia as my green. But if I had used Italian Ruscus or Boxwood or certain types of Myrtle, it still would have looked really good. I love the little bit of wax in here. I think it adds that perfect amount of texture, which I'm a huge fan of. But if wax wasn't available, I would have done just Parvifolia. And it still would have looked really, really good. So don't worry about it. That's something a lot of people, I think, stress about is finding the exact same thing but um, it's not gonna be possible in all markets. Very normal and it'll still look fantastic as long as you pick really good hardy options. There's one thing I didn't do, but I would do for a wedding and that is I would spray this with crowning glory or finishing touch. Those are two similar products and it's basically a sealant. So uh, you're, most of you aren't gonna have access to that. Uh, it is something you can order online, but it may not be something you really need for your wedding. But that's a, if, you can ha if you can have access to it, it's a good thing to use. That gives you that extra bit of security It'll slow down the wilting, um, which is really important for summer weddings as well. For storage, this is a lot like a boutonniere. Well, it's basically a, a giant boutonniere that you're wearing on your head. So when you're done, and you can do this one to two days before your wedding. When you're done, you're gonna put it in a sealed container and you're gonna put it in the fridge, a regular fridge. You don't freeze it, you put it in a regular refrigerator, um, make sure it's not touching the wall because sometimes stuff freezes when it gets too far back and you only take it out the day of your wedding when you're ready to put it on your head. Um, so I think we've covered it all. The storage, extra security. Oh, one other note. So this is, a, this is a crown that you put on that goes around your head. This is the same principle that if you were trying to make like a hair piece. So let's say you didn't want the bit that goes here. You just want like a little cluster of something that's above your ear. It's exactly the same. Instead of doing a round loop of wire, you just do a, like a small piece of straight wire and you just exactly the same way that we did it today. You tape on the little pieces and then you get your hairdresser to secure it on with bobby pins. So once you know how to do this, you can do, there's a lot of different applications. I do think I've covered it all now, but if you have any other questions, you can always email me at info at We're located in Vancouver, Canada, and I will see you guys next time.